So yeah, so tell, tell us about how you applied for medical school, wait, 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 how you applied to medical school, where you went, what that experience was like, you know, especially like some of the stories you used to tell about, you know, the spear fishing and, and so on and so forth. So three, two, one. So when I left LA, um, which is where I was, the last I was doing my rock and roll thing, I, uh, I came back here and uh, came and did my pre-vet stuff. Uh, we did some plays, some weird stuff like that to get me through, but I was basically in junior college. I left junior college and then went to Mississippi State. I was there for over two years and I could never get my math grades to where I thought they should be, so I probably spent a little more time studying zoology and trying to get my math grades up than I, than I wanted to. While I was applying to vet school, um, they tell you when you go to college that you need to do things to become more uh, um, more sociologically motivated. So I ended up being the vice president of an organism, organization called SCAPE, Students Concerned About Protecting the Environment. When I did this, uh, you know, you're trying to do a lot of good. It turns out that you end up speaking on a lot of things that you probably should not have been speaking out. So, um, so I ended up having an opinion that went on the uh, the evening news in Starkville, Mississippi, and it turns out that uh, Mississippi State, as a as a general uh, general university, was trying to phase out things like philosophy, which is the mother and father of all science when you think about it, and they were trying to cut out things like agricultural chicken programs and agricultural cow programs and things like this. What I did not know at the time was that the vet school was, was part of that process. The vet school was going to get the monies from the other programs that were going to be shut down. So I went on the front page news saying exactly what I just finished saying, which is you cannot get rid of the mother and father of all science. Philosophy is, is definitely needed. It's probably one of the one few classes that have changed my life outside of zoology. And uh, in doing so, you know, I, I, I ended up being black marked from the vet school and I found out when I was on a date one night, I said, oh yeah, we know your name. I've seen your name on a, a list at the vet school. We, you'll never make it in type thing. So at that point in time, I, I started to lose all hope and I got, uh, I got a letter from Ross University and Ross University's in St. Kitts in the Caribbean and I basically this letter said you kind of student that we're looking for would you be willing to uh, to come for an interview and at that point in time it was yes I need to go on this interview so um, dad put me on a bus from Gulfport to Miami that was probably the longest day and most wasted day of my entire life 26 hours on a bus from here to Miami I didn't know people could stink so bad I didn't know <laughs> I didn't understand exactly where these buses stopped, but I learned a lot about human nature in, in those whole 26 hours. Anyway, I went to Miami. I met with a medical doctor who was actually interviewing us for a vet school position, and it, we ended up having a nice long conversation, and he said I was a kind of student, but he wanted me to do some more math, and I wanted to do more field studies. I won the debate, and I got to go to school for field studies and study bald eagles and ospreys for a short time. After that, I went straight to uh, to St. Kitts, uh, lived on the island for just over two years. I learned how to swim efficiently, spearfish. I was once taught a Greek god once I came back from spearfishing. Um, <laughs> loans were never enough to make ends meet, so I ended up learning how to trade fish for dry goods and stuff for the locals on the island. You know, so I'd go to school for the rest of the afternoon, I'd walk home 300 feet to school, go 150 feet to the water, and then I would spearfish till dark, which is two and a half, three hours, depending on when I got out of vet school. Uh, I'd get on shore just before dark, the locals would meet me there, one or two guys would have whatever wares they get, I always told them, bring me noodles, bring me rice, mangoes, love mangoes. Um, and that's pretty much how I survived. Uh, that my grades, obviously, I became a DVM, so my grades weren't too bad. Um, and while I was there, I just got to continue that passion, which was exotic medicine. I love exotic animals. They, they, they give me that challenge to go that, that place in medicine. No man has gone before. So, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's pretty much the story of St. Kitts and exotics. Although there's many of the stories in the meantime. Did you, did you when you were going there, did you, do you, do you still have, uh, what is the word? peers that, that you stay in contact with and people you studied with when you were there? Um, yeah, a few. I, I hear from them every now and then. Uh, not very often. You know, once you get done with that part of school, you really have to go on and life continues. You know, you, you just take the next chapter one at, one at a time. Yeah. 